Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and this is the <clears throat> semester one, uh, one of the most missed um, uh, worksheets that I've put together so that we can practice. Typically, we, I give this after the semester one final, but this is an older one, so let's go ahead and go over it because it'll be beneficial to you anyway. So for the first one, it says, <clears throat> the limit as h goes to zero of the cosine of pi plus h minus cosine pi over h, what does this equal? Well, what you need to recognize here is you don't need to do any limits or make this more complicated. What you have to realize is that this, the whole thing, is just the definition of a derivative. And since it's a definition of a derivative, we are taking the derivative with respect to x of the cosine of x. Well, that equals negative sine, and we need to put in pi. That's our x in this. So negative sine pi is what we're looking for here, and this comes out to be 0. All right, for the next one. Since the double prime equals this, then the graph of f has inflection points when x is what? All right, well, let's take a look at this. Since f double prime is going to be that, we know that we will end up with possible inflection points at x equals negative 1, 3, and negative 6. How did I get those? Well, that's what made these zeros. When f double prime of x equals 0, that's how we find inflection points. Those are possible values when it equals 0 or is undefined. So now we've got to test these points. So I'm going to put these on a number line, and I'll test negative 6, negative 1, and 3, and I'll test points in between. And I'll plug these into f double prime. So I'll pick a value, say, way out here, and I'll pick, like, negative 10. And I'll plug it into my f of x, f double prime of x, I should say. And I'll end up getting negative, uh, I'm sorry, it'll be um, over here, I'll get positive values. That's correct, because that'll be positive when you square it, positive, positive. Okay, so over here, we end up with positive as well. So I pick like negative 5, negative 4, plugged it in. In this region right here, I'll end up with negative values. So you can plug 0 in, and you'll see that that comes out to be negative. And over here, I'll plug in, say, 5, 10, and I'll get positive values. So these end up being negative values here and positive values there. Well, the only time it changes from negative to positive are in these two spots. So this occurs at x equals negative 1 and 3 only. It does not occur here because it goes from positive to positive. All right, moving on to the next one. The limit as x approaches 4 of that. Well, let's try brute force. We'll try direct substitution. I'll put in over here. I'll put a 4 in, and I'll get 2 minus 2 on the bottom. I can't. I'll get an indeterminate form. So let's see. One thing I can do, and this is kind of like a little tricky thing. You've been able to, in the past, if you had x squared minus 4, this factors into x minus 2, x plus 2. You've done that in the past. Well, since this is an x, we can actually factor this into a square root x minus 2. Square root x plus 2. That's just kind of a little trick here that we can do. You can try multiplying the top and bottom by the conjugate, see if that works. It may. But that's just a little trick here that you need to recognize and just be aware of. On the bottom, I'm just going to take a negative out, and I'll get the square root of x, and this will end up being minus 2 because negative negative would give me that positive 2. And look what happens. That reduces with that. I end up with the square root of x plus 2 over negative 1. And this ends up being, when I plug the 4 in, a negative 4 as my limit. All right, so moving on to number uh, four. It says, using the table of values shown above, what is the value of this? And we are looking to take the derivative with respect to x of f of g of 3. All right, well, what this means is, let's think of it like this. Let's see if I could slide this up. This has been giving me a little bit of trouble um, yeah, so we'll just move it up like this. Sorry about that. So we'll have to just deal with that. Okay, in any case, um, so what we'll have to do here is this, this is telling me to take the derivative 
with respect to x of f of g of 3. So f of g, yeah. So this means f prime of g of x times, now I got to chain rule this, g prime of x. So that's what this means. So I'm taking f prime of g of 3 times g prime of 3. So now let's look at the tables. Do I know what g of 3 is? g of 3 is 1. Then I So now I have 1 here, so I've got f prime of 1 times. Do I know what g prime of 3 is? Well, that's 4. That's 6. Now let's find what f prime of 1 is. f prime of 1 gives me 1. So 1 times 6 is 6. Okay, if the rate of 1 half pi r squared increases at 5 times the rate of 4 pi r increases, what is the value of r? So what this is saying is the rate of this. So we need a rate. What's a rate? A rate is a derivative. So we need dr dt of that. And that'll, so that means I need to take the derivative of this, which will give me, this is 2 times the 1 half goes away, and I'll just end up with pi times r. And that's what my dr dt is for this, because it's a rate. But they're saying that it increases 5 times the rate 4 pi r increases. Well, the rate that 4 times 4 pi r, again, I need a dr dt here, and I take a derivative of this thing, and that gives me 4 pi. So what I end up happening, what ends up happening is I have this, these two rates, I want to try to get them equal to it, but they're related because one is five times that of the other. So we have pi r equals five times that of the four pi. So that means the r that will reduce out is going to be 20. Okay. So for the next problem now, it says if f of x equals that, this piecewise function. Again, sorry that this is kind of giving me a hard time moving here, so we'll move that like that. It looks like a mess, but it is what it is. Sometimes the software doesn't behave properly. Okay, so if f of x equals this piecewise function, what is the value of a for which f of x is continuous for all values of x? So what we have here is we've got this being continuous, whoops, this being continuous. So that means since it's continuous, that means these two will equal the same at the x value of 2. Okay, so that means I can set this x plus 1 equal to 4 plus ax squared at my x value of 2. So 2 plus 1 equals 4 plus a times 2 squared. So let's finish that up here. So I'll end up with 3 equaling 4 plus 4a. So negative 1 equals 4a. So a is going to be negative 1 fourth. So the key word was continuity. And for continuous here, continuity means when I plug in this x value, I can, I'll have the same point there for both parts of the piecewise function. Okay, number seven asks us to integrate. And we need to integrate this from negative three to negative one of uh, this is the root three times x to the negative two. All right, well, this integral, this right here, we've got root three, and if we try to guess and check at that, that would have to be, remember, we move it up, we're adding a power, so it'd be negative one. So if I multiply, this would have to be a negative out in front, and now I've got it on the bounds from negative three to negative one. I plug that in, I get negative root three times negative one to the negative one minus negative root three times negative three to the negative one. And this ends up being root three minus root 3 over 3, which is 2 root 3 over 3. All right, find the horizontal asymptotes of this. Well, what ends up happening here is you've got this absolute value right there, kind of 
That's a kink into things. Remember, the absolute value of x is equal to plus or minus x. So if I have the limit as x goes to infinity, and I'm going to find the limit as x goes to <clears throat> negative infinity of these two, and I, this ends up being 3 minus negative x over x. And when I plug in infinity, sorry, this will be infinity down here as well. I'll get 1. When I do 3 minus, now the other version of this will be just an x over x. I'll get negative 1. So this ends up being the limit as x goes to infinity is going to end up being plus or minus the 1. So y equals 1 or plus or minus the 1, I should say. Those are my two horizontal asymptotes for this. All right, let's see. Again, oh, this is driving me nuts that it's not behaving. Okay, moving on to number 8. <clears throat> I'm sorry, number 9. What is the slope of the tangent line to y equals cosine squared of 3x, pi, 3x plus pi at x equals pi over 4? All right, so the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line, is just asking us to take a derivative, right? So we take this derivative, and I'll end up with, remember, this will be cosine of 3x plus pi, this whole thing squared, and then I chain rule it. So I'll end up with 2 times the cosine of 3x plus pi times, now i got to take the derivative of this cosine, which would give me negative sine of this 3x plus pi. Now i got to take the derivative inside of that, keep chain ruling it till you're done, which will be negative 3. So remember, this is a negative out in front, or positive 3. So cleaning this up, I get 2 cosine of 3. Now, they asked me to do this at pi over, um, at x equals pi over 4, so let's just plug it in now before we even clean it up. So let's just do that. And so I will get 3 times pi over 4 plus pi times negative sine of 3 times pi over 4 plus uh, 3 times pi over 4 plus the pi times the 3. And I'll get 2. Now, this whole thing is 3 pi over 4 plus pi is going to end up being uh, 1 and uh, 3 fourths pi, so 8 pi over 4, and that comes out to be root 2 over 2. This whole thing cleans up to be positive root 2 over 2. And I still have that 3, and now I can clean all this up, and I'll end up with positive 3 as my answer here. So you'll end up with 2 over 4, which is a half, 2 times 1 half, and those will reduce, times the 3 gives you that. All right, I know this was rather quick. We have a lot of reviews. Uh, I'll probably post up another video, but hopefully this one helped. These were some of the key concepts in the years past that uh, students needed the most help with on the final. All right, so good luck. Study for your final, and I'm going to say it. Make sure to subscribe. Thank you.